I think that most professional society, professional groups do have be, eventually become relatively small. If you talk to uh, heart surgeons or uh, uh, lawyers who specialize in a particular area, they do become very small. Uh, the unfortunate part in waste management is that uh, it's not a very professional group. Uh, there are people that come from different areas uh, and different backgrounds, most importantly. And um, they do have, uh, in my mind, they do have uh, their own uh, objectives. And a lot of the time, there are uh, financial objectives. So that uh, they do skew views and, and, and uh, do not tend to uh, cooperate. Well, I, I guess it depends on, uh, there's a lot of players uh, in the field. You have the uh, the people that, let's say, own the waste, the municipalities, if you will, and are trying to look for solutions, most of them pushing for more, more zero waste solutions, uh, as understandably so. And then you have the service providers, and you alluded to some of them, the people that haul the waste away from the homes, the people that try to process the waste, uh, recycle it, and then uh, compost the waste in some cases, and then... Uh, landfill it in other cases and I think what I'm seeing at least is uh, that more companies, more service providers if you will, are trying to cover more of those fields. There's been some that have traditionally been strong in hauling, some traditionally strong in, in landfilling and some traditionally strong in recycling if you will and I think more of them, more and more of them, more of the big players in particular are trying to provide a full service offering and I think where you see the tensions is between those that are trying to position themselves uh, with what they are able to offer to the people that need the services and of course the technology providers that provide the technology with which to uh, maybe do the composting better, the recycling better, the energy recovery better which is of course one of the newer uh, ways of uh, extracting value from waste but I think at the end everyone has the same interest and that's getting the most value from our end of life resources as possible and everyone just has a different route uh, to getting there, which is natural. Uh, and we've seen a lot of technology evolve just in the last decade. And I think it's quite natural for there to be the competition among the technologies. And I think it's actually healthy uh, that there's competition among the technologies because it'll push up, uh, up the best technologies faster. I think the, the problem is you have a single entity that owns these resources um, and you often have a single service provider providing the services because they're looking for one-stop shopping. And that's where I see sometimes the problem where you don't have competition among the service providers within a community. They get 20-year contracts, so you're kind of whatever that service provider decides is the appropriate service for that particular resource owner <laughs> is the way I like to look at them. I, uh, I don't look at it as waste. I look at it as resources. Um, they're almost stuck in many cases with 10 to 20-year contracts sometimes. Um, I would agree with Mike very strongly that competition uh, can be very, very good and very healthy. I think one of the larger problems that we face is that the old guard who sort of controls a lot of this waste, particularly in the United States, um, is pretty well set in their ways. And um, they look at new technologies not so much as a complementary piece, but as a threat to their way of doing business and how they can hold on to their market share. Um, I think that if we can work out a situation where, as Jill, you and I are working together on a couple of things, we bring in different players for different parts. We have experts in each piece as opposed to a jack-of-all-trades, which can sometimes end up as a master of none.